It's Q&A Friday, eh, eh, time to chat, laugh and play, eh, eh, got questions in your pocket, I'm ready to unlock it, eh, 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 eh. Q&A Friday, let it fly, answer time, don't be shy, we got mysteries and jokes and maybe some random 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 okay i didn't make that up myself by the way <laughs> it was rubbish wasn't it ah hello welcome to q a friday my name's jason new land please only listen when you can safely close your eyes it's just me a little Vinny who's staring at me for some weird... Why are you staring at me? Oh, because he was having a cuddle and now I've got up and sat at my desk. And now he doesn't know what to do. He's like, oh. Oh, no, he's found something to do. That's fine. I think he's going to be happy now for a few minutes. So, welcome to yet another Gwene Friday. Who would have thought another one, another Friday? I'm trying to think what else is there to say. I've got a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. I have a YouTube channel, and every time I make a new recording, I create a video which lasts for 10 hours and yeah it's it's uh, pretty much a dark screen after the first 10 seconds and that is that's it I don't think there's anything else to say so I've, uh, this week, uh, just in case you didn't listen to yesterday's recording, it's been quite a busy week. I've been focusing on sorting out my financial issues. Admittedly, I was doing that last week, but I've been doing it this week as well. So like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday last week, this week... Uh, also helped the neighbour with some stuff. Um, what else did I do? I did something else. So I made I made a I made a podcast on Monday, a podcast on Tuesday, a podcast yesterday. Don't think I did one on Wednesday. And now there's one today. I think I did a podcast on Sunday as well. So I've done a few this week. Hmm. Uh, You may have noticed there's no adverts anymore on the podcasts. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I did something yesterday that I was quite pleased about. No, it wasn't that. What was it? Um, I washed my hair. (laughs) I was quite pleased because I washed my hair and it's ironic because now, well, it's not if it's ironic is the right word, but I was about to say that my lower back didn't hurt. So usually when I wash my hair or if I bend over for any length of time, which, you know, when I wash my hair over the, over the bath, it's not a long time, but it's a few minutes and it usually causes quite a lot of... Uh, discomfort but yesterday for some reason for some reason it it was all right it was still a bit stiff but i think after all these months of doing the regular squats with weights uh, i think has strengthened my back up seems like it i mean that is one of the exercises the physiotherapist advised me to do this was like two years ago. So I started doing squats, but I didn't use weights. I wanted to just get used to doing the squats. And 
and I was doing like 10, then 20, then I worked it up. And now, then I added the weights, so like dumbbells. So I'm, I just hold them basically in my arms, well, in my hands, not my arms, but, uh, and just let them dangle really. And I just do the squats then. And now I do 100 uh, in one go every morning. So that's quite good. It seems to be doing the trick. I also do exercises with my wrists as well. Or like my forearms. So I move the, the weights around. So it exercises the muscles in my forearms. And uh, I, so hopefully I strengthen my wrists a bit as well. Uh, my left wrist has always been weaker than my right wrist for some reason. don't know why. So I... What else did I do yesterday? Um, that's going to really bug me now. I did do something yesterday, but I can't remember what it is. It's been a week of getting stuff done. All right, okay. I changed my electric and gas supplier over to a cheaper tariff so that that was I mean it was actually really easy to be honest it was pretty simple I did put a link on my Facebook page for those that maybe would consider changing over if they're looking if you're looking to change over it's a company called Octopus and I got on very good authority by two different people that have had that have been with them for quite a while that they're very good and you can get a fifty pound voucher or money off your bill and I also get fifty pound if you sign up. I don't get a fifty pound off my bill. So if I get enough people signing up then I'll have no bill. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought I'd just add it because you, you can get people to sign up. So I thought I'd just stick it on my Facebook page just in case there's anyone in the UK who's looking to change their electric and gas. It's just, you know, in the winter I was getting 100, 160, 170, 180, if not more, a month costing me. And I managed to get a tariff for £96 a month for the rest of the year, for, for the whole year. So, you know, that should be pretty good. And so, yeah, that was what I did yesterday. Today, I'm not even saying this with any kind of sadness, really, to be honest. I have... Um, I have withdrawn from the open university course just there's there's certain things going on and I just uh, I'm not motivated to do it it's it's a, it's a weird one I'll, I'll probably talk about it another time but yeah just uh, I'm you know I, I, I've been thinking about it for a month over a month now and every time I go back to it, I'm just, just like, I think I've come to a point in my life where I love learning new things, but it has to be in my own way. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be quizzed. I don't want to have to, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not doing it for any other reason other than just for fun, to entertain myself. So I will listen to books on philosophy, psychology, metaphysics. I'll listen to books on motivation. I'll look <laughs> ironic there, uh, but I listen to to books or um, literature. It's all kinds of Dostoevsky, uh, Celine, whatever. I'll read. You know, I listen to those books. Because I feel that it is 
improving my brain. I, I like to think improving my mind, perhaps improving my, uh, what's, what is it? Um, um, words, words, my word, vo, vo, voca, voca, vo, vocabulary, that's it, vocabulary. So hopefully it's going to improve that in it. Therefore, I'm trying to move away from saying so. The thing is, if I keep just mentioning the fact that I keep saying so, it's going to be more obvious and more just to other people listening. And you, you actually, I didn't notice it before, but you do say so a lot, don't you? Ah. <sighs> So the latest is um, my dad is yeah my dad's got some stuff going on as well he's got medical stuff he's having done next week that's um, yeah it's playing on my mind a little bit I just hope that he's going to be all right and he you know I just yeah it's natural isn't it to be concerned about stuff like that. Vinny's okay. Vinny's doing all right. He's seen his mum a few times this week. That's uh, the lady that used to have him. In fact, the lady that called him, that named him Vinny, because his original name was Bear. And she's known him since he was a baby, since he was literally first born. So we've got videos of him running around as a puppy. It's just so he's got that um, that connection with her, that imprint, I guess, that he hasn't got with me. There's he's never not known her his whole life. So her smell, the way she feels, you know, I guess when he cuddles her and all that stuff is he's just her voice. Everything. He's is part of him. She's part of him. And I guess I, I'm a late a late comer to his life because he was ten months when I got in. And she's a neighbour, so she lives yeah you know, very close. And he loses his mind whenever she's around. He adores her so much. But he's not like that with me. But I think it, apparently when I'm not there, he's different though. He's not like that when I'm not there. But we were talking about it. And I think it's one of those, th that's his holiday. You know, that that's him having fun when he goes there. Which doesn't make me feel great, to be honest. But it is that. I don't know how to explain it, but he's it's his it's his playtime. He's getting out of the house, he's got a garden over there, there's more space, more rooms, there's two bedrooms, a much bigger lounge, bigger kitchen. You know, everything's bigger over there because it's uh, just a bigger flat. And there's a garden as well. So he's got and she's there, so and there's a huge settee, so we can run around, jump around on the settee. So I guess he's just, he just really loves it over there. Yeah, it's it's nice and I suppose a little bit upsetting sometimes because I'm thinking he prefers to be there than to be here. But I don't know if that's true. I think he loves both. He loves being in both places. This is his home. This is where he sleeps. This is where he, he you know, is all the time most of the time with me so I think he's probably are you used to being with me now Vin <gasps> what's that what's that you can hear something in the garden can't you you're not going to start barking are you please don't please baby boy don't start barking please <laughs> please don't please two years 
it's nearly two years since I first got him. It's now the 29th of November, and it was, I don't know the exact date that I got him, but it was the beginning of December. So, right, so I have ended the course. That's finished. I'm doing everything I can to try and cut down on expenses, just so I can uh, try and move forward. Oh, what's this? Good morning. If I... En- Good, I've just got a text message. Good afternoon. If our NHS National Diabetes Prevention Programme face-to-face sessions are not right for you, join our online groups. They keep contacting me for the National Diabetes Prevention Programme. But I told them that my blood sugar level was a lot lower and I didn't... You know what? Maybe, maybe I do need to speak to them. Maybe I do need to, to, maybe a little bit of advice wouldn't be bad, would it? I guess, to make sure that I do prevent the diabetes. Because I was pre-diabetic six months ago, and now I'm not. Or at least I wasn't last time I got tested. I lost some weight. Uh, it's just they kept phoning saying, oh, Dr. Surgery's re- recommended us. I said, when was that? I said, about three months ago. I said, actually, I've seen them since then. I saw them in September, and they said I was doing a lot better since I've had my, since I'd reduced the weight and my sugar level's gone down and all that. But I'm just wondering. I mean, it's not like, it wasn't like a perfect sugar level you know what I wasn't I'm not like Mr. Super Healthy but everything's wonderful but it's definitely improved since last time I was there like when I went back ah well so that really is all the latest I mean what can you believe it's less than a month till Christmas? Less than a month? It's ridiculous. It just goes so quickly. So quickly, isn't it? Let me just tell you what the latest books I'm reading are or listening to. I like to think it's reading, but it's still listening, isn't it? So, what is it? Philosophy for Dummies, that's my latest book. But I've got some books on here that I've not listened to yet. So, Thus Spoke Zarathustra by uh, Friedrich, Friedrich Nietzsche or Nietzsche. I listened to The Art of War the other day. That's by Sun Tzu. Understanding the Dark Side of Psychology. So that's one. I was halfway through that one. Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. Nearly completed that. Passions, the philosophy of something or other. This is a book I read by, I listened to by Matt Haig, Reasons to Stay Alive. It just sounded like an interesting book, and it is. It is. And then I listened to The Men Who Stare at Goats by John Ronson. I'm only... I'm pretty sure I listened to the whole of it and I started listening to it again. Also, a book called Dry by Daniel H. Pink. I'm just going to look at some of the books that I've actually finished. So I did start Crime and Punishment, which Dostoevsky. I found it very interesting, some of the dialogue in that. But I was also a little bit confused by what was some of the stuff I was reading. Not confused, but like, Okay, you got, um, what's this other one, shocking, I'll tell you what I can, what the heck, right, I can actually tell you, if I go back, because the, that was the audible, I wonder if people can, Send me audible. 
gift me audible tokens. I wonder if that's possible. So, health and wealth. Oh, where is it? I'm just going to look at my account details. So I've reduced it from two books a month to one book a month, or one credit a month. Here's where you get with your membership. Two credit. I've already switched the membership. I switched it. Current plan. All oh, right, it switches on the 23rd of um, December. So I'm currently on the two, two a day, two a month. The thing is, you can listen to books and then get rid of them and get another one, like sort of almost like a library, I guess, swap it. Not with all of them, but with some of them. However, I quite like to keep the books so I can listen to them another time. Not all of them, but just, you know, sometimes. So, listen history. Let's have a look. What have I got? Philosophy for dummies, shocking psychological studies and the lesson they teach. The Tao of the Tao of Pooh, or the Tower of Pooh. Forty eight Laws of Power. The Prince by uh, Niccolo Machiavelli. Meditations. So I was and this is um Yeah, I was listening to that the other day. I found that interesting. I did. The Great Questions of Philosophy and Physics. When are you going to start doing the questions and the answers? As this is Q&A Friday. Yeah, I quite, I, that was quite a good book. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, fair enough. Tools of Titans. Passion, Philosophy and Intelligence of Emotions. Understanding Disorders of the Brain. Control, okay, understanding Lee. What? This is weird. Some of these I don't remember even having. Essentials of Social Psychology. Introduction to Psychology, the Psychology Book, The Absorbent Mind, Kinds of Minds, The Pocket Guide to Neuroscience for Clinicians, Forensics, How the Mind Works. Psychology, Psych Psych 101, Brain Myths Exploded, Think Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, Accelerated Learning Models, Reality is Plastic, Art of Selling, of Self Learning, Process Oriented Hypnosis. Is that, it's not all the books, is it? Is that all the books I've got? I thought I had hundreds. According to this, there's not many. That's weird. I'll listen history, so not the actual membership details. View membership profile. Ah. Purchase history. Anyway, so the last 365 days, yeah, there's quite a few. If I do 40... Forty, so about eighty. I've l I've listened to about eighty books that are on here this year. So I go three hundred sixty-five days, two hundred twenty-three. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only nine books that I ordered last year. Two thousand twenty-two. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, five, six. Probably about thirty-five, forty, two thousand twenty-one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two thousand twenty, twenty. Wow, about eighty. Two thousand nineteen. Forty. Two thousand 
2018. Wow, the plot is quite a few. Probably about 35. 2017, when I first started listening to Audible Books 1. That's strange. And then 2024, there's about 80, so yeah. Huh. Right, questions. The first question I'm going to do is a question for Mary. And she sent me a message on by email. Where is it? Where are you? Mary, where are you? Mary, this is this is it's hiding. How strange! Why would it be hiding? So I got junk mail. It wouldn't be in junk mail. It was in the inbox. And this is my email. It's it's not there. That's really weird. It's on my phone, but it's not on the actual. Ah. Oh. That's because I've had loads of emails today for some reason. Okay. Uh, so the question I've got from Mary is... Um, okay. How did you end up living in a Buddhist centre and why did you leave? Okay, thanks Mary. Um, so let's have a look. I let's go have a drink of water. Hopefully this just won't disturb anyone that's trying to sleep. <laughs> Gotta keep it professional. <laughs> Finny was looking at me like, what the hell are you doing, Daddy? So, the question, how did I end up living? So, I suppose I should say, I didn't actually live in the Buddhist centre, but it was a Buddhist community, which was connected to the Buddhist centre. Um, how did... Well, I started going to the Buddhist centre in, I think, November... The end of, yeah, the end of 2003. I started going there due to having, started having serious, really bad panic attacks. And that was kind of the start of my, of that thing going on. So I decided, let's try and see if meditation would help. And the Buddhist centre was literally round the corner from where I worked. I didn't know. Well, did I know? I might have known. I can't remember what I knew back then. Maybe I, I might not have even known what I knew then at the time. So what I did is I must have seen meditation classes. And I walked past this building very regularly during the week any time I went into town pretty much from where I worked I'd walk through there and past this and there was an evolution shop there as well now when I didn't know I started going into the evolution shop See that's what that's what's weird about this because I I must have been going no yeah that's it so I I've got it now so I started going into the Buddhist center about November I got to know the people that worked in the Buddhist shop evolution shop it was next door and the Buddhist center was upstairs so the entrance was next door to the shop but the the actual Buddhist center was above the evolution shop and, you know, I got to know the people working in the evolution shop. I'd go in there and that's where I would buy gifts and stuff, you know, for family and, you know, 
over the next year or so. I was a regular at the Buddhist Center, really, really trying to figure out how to reduce my stress and to get a grip of what was going on because I didn't, I really didn't understand it. Didn't know why, or you know, and, but I still wanted to carry on working. I didn't want to leave my job. And I carried on for a, a whole year working with the um, really extreme anxiety and panic attacks, like for a year. Um, I had some time off in, I think I had, I was off twice with it. And then it kind of seemed to not so much get better, but I, I seemed to have it kind of under control a little bit during the summer and then come November yeah come November 2003 oh I know what happened so I yeah I seem to have it under control to a degree I mean it you know as far as functioning um, doing well at my job, holding it together. But unfortunately, I was still drinking in the evenings, which wasn't helping me. I was also... What else was I doing? Oh, I, yeah, I, I, I joined... This is going to be weird considering what I talked about earlier. I started a, um, a college course. It was a holistic therapy course where I was studying to do massage therapy, aromatherapy, Indian, hesa, Indian head massage as well. And that's something that I started to do full time, five days a week. And I was allowed to go part time with the sales job in the insurance. So I was work, I was at college all day. I literally like nine till four, something like that. And then I was working from five till nine, pretty much every night, and then Saturday all day. It didn't leave me with a lot of time. I think that was probably the thing that pushed me over because over the my threshold of coping and I just walked out of there I just had to I had to leave so I, I was there one night it was a, a, a week I, I basically I, I, I think I, I'm not sure what happened first either I left the job or I left the college course. My memory is I just did both at the same time. I left, I walked out of work and I didn't go back to college. And I went away for a few days just to get away. That didn't really help to be honest. And I came back I got a. I managed to get some money, so I'd I'd already got a loan, so I thought I was going to be all right. And I had credit cards, which wasn't a good idea. So I, and I was living off those. For a year. Well, not a whole year, but between, the end of two thousand three until. About September two thousand and four. So during that time, I also had a part-time job working in the evolution shop, which was a gift shop, which was below the Buddhist center. So during 2004, I was I was getting to know the staff, and you know it was, it was quite good. I quite liked it sometimes. It was very busy. Very very busy. And. 
and I yeah so I can't, I did that for a little while I was only doing a few hours a week not many a couple of days a week during Christmas a bit more but generally not I wasn't even earning enough to pay tax I don't think it was quite a small amount but it got me out of the house and then I was getting in more and more debt with the credit cards it was like getting you know I start putting the compact compound interest on it was just getting silly so I they pretty much forced me out they didn't sack me but they said I had to get a job because I was by being there I was getting myself into more trouble financially and so anyway what I did is I found a job back in insurance the one thing that I didn't want to do again but it seemed to be the only option at the time so I got back to that and during the yeah and I was still going to the Buddhist Centre I was still involved in that and that was September 2004 and then in about March 2005 after months of asking to become to join the, the uh, community to move into the Buddhist community they said yes and I moved in about March time 2005 and I was living there until November 2007 now I'll explain what the community was because there's a few people anyone that's lived there would say different things for me it wasn't as full on as some Buddhist communities are and I know someone that went there that lived there at the same time as me and he, he his attitude or his opinion rather was that it was just a house share with some Buddhists living together. It was a house share. No, it wasn't. It was, but it wasn't, because I've lived in lots and lots and lots of places where I've rented a room, and this was nothing like that. There was no locks on the door, on any of our doors. We... Uh, not every day, but at least once a week, we'd all eat communally together. We were friends. We all generally got on. We'd go out and do stuff sometimes. We'd see each other at the Buddhist centre as well. We'd go there together. So it, to me, it wasn't anything like living in uh, multiple was it M multiple occupancy place you know we're just renting a room I've done that so many times over the years since I was sort of 17 or 18 or whatever 7, 16 so I, this wasn't like that for me and I got on very well with I got on well with most people in there The thing is, um, I was still drinking. So I stopped drinking alcohol all the way through 2004. And then 2000 and, well, New Year's Eve 2004. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I was so pleased with my progress that I decided to start drinking again. Is yeah, it's, it's a weird one, but I used to go to the local pub when I was in the Buddhist community. I know a lot of that was just I don't know. I be I think to be fair, I'm not that I need to defend myself. I didn't know really what was going on with me, and I was just self medicating. That's as simple as that. I didn't know. All I knew it seemed to help sometimes sometimes it didn't but it seemed to be I thought it was helping and 
I used that as a like self medication from two thousand all the way up till about two thousand fifteen. Apart from two thousand four. And then when I moved in here and I had reduced my drinking, I did like after two thousand and four I only drank weak lager. Didn't drink you know, heart you know, strong lager anymore. But I was still able to get through I was still doing like six cans a night. And then not 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 long before I moved here, which is two thousand fifteen, about April time I think, I I probably do about drink about six cans of lager, like Foster's. It's, you know, I kind of I was trying to stick it to the weekend when I was working. I was trying to only do it on a Friday and a Saturday night, and then the weekend started early, started on a Thursday, and it went on a little bit longer. So it was a Sunday, like oh let's do it an extra day with me on Monday, and then perhaps we'll start it on Wednesday. So it got a little bit like that. But then leading up to me moving in here, I couldn't really afford to drink hardly anything because I was living on a very small amount until I think it was probably October. October? Was it October? It was near the end of 2014 when my benefits came through. So I was on like bare minimum for about six, seven months. And then I kind of started drinking a little bit. But when I moved here, something changed. I don't know what it was. You know, I, I was drinking in the evenings, but only at weekends, really. And it just pitted out, petered out, pitted out, whatever. And I just lost interest. I haven't, I haven't drunk any alcohol since for two years. Yeah, it's been two years so I even touched alcohol. And before that, it's, I mean, I think on my 50th birthday, I bought some, it's weird isn't it, it's blimey, over four years ago now. My 50th birthday I bought eight cans of lager, or eight packs of six pack. I don't know, it was, I bought quite a few, you know, half of them were for my friend, half of them were for me, I had about a quarter of one of them, as like, nah, just didn't want it, didn't, wasn't enjoying it, didn't, didn't see the point, so I just gave them to him. Just wasn't wasn't for, wasn't me anymore. So I don't really know what happened, but something about moving here, I lost interest in alcohol. Maybe I just didn't need it. Maybe the fact that I was on medication, perhaps the correct medication. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but anyway, so what I did. A lot of people are making noises in the garden. <laughs> so I... So I was in a Buddhist community. It was in the middle. Honestly, it's a long way away from anything in the town. It's probably a good 50 minutes walk from the town. An hour, 50 minutes to an hour walk. And I lived in a... I, I, it was a. Uh, there was a basement, and then there was upstairs, which was on the ground floor. Then there was an upstairs, which was above the ground floor. If that makes sense. So it's three stories, kind of. But it was built on a hill. So the basement, although it was underground, it wasn't on the back. 
it was underground at the front, but it wasn't at the back, I think. Is that right? I can't remember. It was partly underground. Yeah, it's partly underground. But it was kind of on a hill, on a slope. On a really busy road, which led to the motorway. Which, ironically, is my closest road here. Is a really busy road that leads to a busy motorway. But on this occasion, I was literally right on that road. Woken up. Well, not, I got used to it after a while, but traffic, lorries, really early in the morning. But it was one of those areas where at night, after, especially like in the middle of the night, pitch black, all the stars, it was yeah, quite, a, quite a lovely sight to look at. The last time I remember doing that really other than there was when I went to Norwich in probably about 2005 as well and I was walking with I think it was the person that I was one of the people I was living with we went on retreat together I've never told you about the retreats have I I've never I never mentioned the retreats I've been on a few retreats not loads but I'm really thinking about that it might be time for me to get back to going to the Buddhist center. I uh, meditated today for the first time in ages. And I think it would do me good to get back and maybe maybe try and get on retreat. See if Vinny can be looked after by what's her name. Uh, and it would just be like for a week. I uh, should be able to get a discount. I don't know how much it would cost. I'd have to save up for it. And it's not a holiday. It's an actual, you know, sometimes there's silent retreats where I was about to dis explain to you what silent means. We all know what silence means, don't we? But it, it's sometimes they'll be silent all the way through and then they'll have one day at the end when you can talk. Other times it will be silent apart from at certain times. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the question was. What was the question? Why did I... How did I end up there? So it was something that I really liked the idea of. Right from the start. So when I was in... What was it? When I first started going to the Buddhist Center, end of 2003... I I went to Yeah, there's there was like a bulletin board and it had and there was like leaflets and stuff and talking about retreat centres and and I started to think, oh perhaps that something I would like to do go and live somewhere and it's, it's been a part of me, because I've been interested in Buddhism since I was a kid, really. Been a little bit fascinated by meditation ever since I watched Kung Fu, the TV show, and Bruce Lee. Because he meditated as well, didn't he? And is it in the lift? Where he just sits down in the lift with a, the nunchucks around his neck. I, I can't remember, but... I know there was uh, Kung Fu, Kane, the TV show Kung Fu. He's put into this box. It was like a punishment. And he had to just be in this box for a couple of days or whatever. And a sweat box or something. And when they opened it up, he was just there, cross-legged, smiling. Because he'd been meditating the whole time. So I I thought oh that's I didn't I mean I didn't want to be locked in a box, but the the idea of maybe having some some degree of peace of mind yeah appealed to me from an early age. I did actually get a meditation course on tape cassette 
in about either two f- in about ninety four or ninety five. I also had quite a f- I had a, a quite a really good selection of Buddhist books back then as well, because that's what I was spending my time doing: studying Buddhism, trying to learn the script. Well, just the words of the Buddha and try and get my head around it. And I didn't really go anywhere. I mean, the weird thing about it is I lived just up the road from the London Buddhist Centre. I know, it's not, I mean, that's before the internet. Had I had, I had the internet, I'd have, that would have been easy to know. But it was in Bethnal Green. I didn't go to Bethnal Green. I think the only... I'd, I'd go past it on the tube station. But there was nothing there for me to go there for. There was no reason for me to go there. I think the only time I actually went to Bethnal Green, pretty much the whole time I lived in London, was when I had a job sweeping the streets behind a, a lorry, you know, a dustbin lorry thing. Or one of those, I don't know what it was, but I was sweeping, sweeping behind them. And that was down the, yeah, down that area, that road, kind of that, that part. And I lived in Stratford, so it's literally just up the road, walkable, kind of. Anyway, I, that would have changed my entire life. If I did, if I knew that was there, I very much likely would have gone, and then I probably would have ended up living in the community with people in London. And who knows? Who knows what would have happened? I might have ended up being a nice person. It's possible. Possible. So I only, only, only. I asked to be in a community, the the one that I went to, what I ended up living in, a couple of times and I kept getting told no. And I think they were a little bit concerned because I was probably a bit feisty as a person and they probably thought maybe it wouldn't, I wouldn't be a good suit. Even though I was very, very good friends with one of the people, the main person that lived there. I say the main person, he was... An order, he was the only order member living there at the time. No, he wasn't. There was two. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. There was two. Maybe there wasn't any space, but when there was space, it was still. I was having these conversations about moving into the community, and at the end of it, still didn't know where he was. It was one of like a two-hour conversation over lunch. Didn't. It was almost like it was like nothing. We were talking about nothing the whole time. Sounds a bit like this, doesn't it? Anyway, so that that's how I ended up doing that. Ended up in there. It was planned as far as I wanted to go there. How did you end up living in a Buddhist centre? Why did you leave? So... So I was there from March 2005. I was working back in insurance at that time. And then what happened is, with all the different things that happened, I ended up going, I ended up starting to go to university full time. It's a three year course that was in the counselling, counselling studies which was in the next town, it was a different town, and I was okay to, I was okay to, tr- to travel up there, I had everything sorted, I had a job, part-time job in Sainsbury's, everything was all organised, and then a bit of a disruption, I needed to find somewhere to live, because there was a bit of conflict in, in the, in the community, kind of got got loggerheads there was a couple of us got loggerheads and there was someone else and so it just got a bit silly and 
it was yeah it was going in the wrong direction so i had to, i needed to find somewhere else to live couldn't find anywhere locally so i ended up moving to the town that i was studying in so that's that's how i ended up moving out and that was november 2007 and i didn't want to move out I really didn't. I'd still be there now, but I wouldn't because they sold the place. I didn't have any rights to live there. I signed those rights away before, long before I moved out. So that they could sell it if they wanted to. Which means I would have ended up losing, the, losing where I lived anyway. So I suppose I may, maybe I made the right decision. I don't know. So that's that's how that came around, really. It's I think it's probably getting to know because I was working with one, two of the people. I was working. Yeah, I was working in the evolution shop with two of the people that lived in the community. So I spent most of two thousand and four, the end of two thousand and three as well, working with them, getting to know them, becoming friends with them, and. I was going around the community and visiting. So I was friends with the people, the other people living in the community as well. So it was like the, the natural next step is to actually move in. And in some ways, that's probably one of the best places I ever lived. In some ways. I, I think I was a better person. I think I don't know I just I, I, I just do I just in some ways maybe or not in all ways but and maybe I wasn't it, it suited me I think it quite suited me being in that environment being around people that were probably just been about being around nice people it helped it it made a difference being around people that weren't chaotic is and I need you know I can't I can't be around chaoticness or chaos I think is the correct word isn't it mm. and yeah, so that's it really. That that's that's all I can really say about that. It's pretty much. I'm glad I did it. Um, the the you know the ending wasn't good, but the it was challenging. Some of the communication was challenging at times, but at the same time. Until the end bit, it was a, it felt like a safe space, and that changed near the end. But beginning, for most of the time there, it felt like a safe space, and I liked that. I appreciated that. So. Oh dear. Right, let me have a look. I just see someone posted a horrible comment. Right, so let's have a look what other, what other, what, 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 what other messages I've got. Questions, rather. There wasn't a lot this week. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. I've got five comments. I don't know how many of those are questions. Let's have a look. I think there was a rant. Yeah, sometimes I get statements. Sometimes I don't. Uh, right. Dimitri asks, to be or not to be, that is the question. So, 
Yeah, I, that's not one. So, so I can't really answer that one. I've got no idea to be or not to be. Yeah. Uh, so, Sean, maybe you've been asked this before. I'm usually asleep before the questions get answered. Ah, cool. Um, I wonder if anyone falls asleep sometimes. It's just because I, I think I'm very interested and perhaps I'm not quite as, I was going to say virile, but that's not the right word, is it? Not quite as enigmatic as I think I am. Maybe. So the question is, when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Mmm. Have another drink just to... Moisten my my luscious lips. Tickle me tonsils. Uh, what did I want to be when I grew up? At one point in my childhood, I wanted to be a policeman. I wanted to be a police officer, so that was my thing. And I was... I was informed quite quickly through a lot of laughter that it was never going to happen because I was both too short and also not clever enough. I had a few people tell me that. Never listen to your teachers. Uh, I, don't, I, just, I think because I was quite short and you had to be I think the the cut off was like five ten or five eleven, and it was quite predictable that I wasn't ever going to be that. Although to be fair, both my brothers of you know a good height. I just didn't, you know, I'm the shortest out of all four of us. My little brother's he's not a lot taller than me, probably an inch or two. But still, as you all know, an inch is a lot. I'm trying to think what else. I think I wanted to be a police person. We used to call them policemen back then. I'd never seen a policewoman. I know they're called police officers now, but back then, in the, I don't know, early 80s, I didn't know that women even were police until I saw the bill on TV and there was women working in there that's the first time because we didn't have where I lived there was never saw a female officer Vinny do you have to do that right now he's, he's found a packet of blue tack and he's decided to rip it open <laughs> bless him I need to get him some doggy chocolate because, you know, you can't eat normal chocolate. But apparently, you can get chocolate as friendly, dog friendly. I thought it'd be good for Easter to get him one and put it in a box and just let him rip the box open. He'd probably enjoy that. I might even treat myself to an Easter egg next year. I can't even remember the last time I had a chocolate bar. It's been a while. So yeah, I, I like the idea of being a police person because it just seemed like a, a cool job to have. It could make people behave themselves. I don't know. I'm not sure why. There was something about it that appealed to me. I think I also liked the idea of being a private eye, a private detective. But I would say that's very likely because of the TV shows I used to watch. Like Magnum P.I. Uh, what's his name? Oh... The Rockford Files, 
there was quite a few and there was detective shows like Kojak and oh what's his name the one he used to always uh, you always found out what happened right at the beginning Columbo Columbo that was very unique that was wasn't it as far as I'm aware that was never done before to show what happened like a who done it but you know who done it right at the start very clever kind of way of doing it um I thought it'd be quite nice to be a magician. But why by that I don't mean like a, a magic act on stage. I mean an actual magician. And I was quite influenced by Sapphire and Steel. Yeah, so I was kind of interested in perhaps being a like a time traveller astral kind of... Uh, person that can control time so that that seemed quite good but admittedly even then that was the late 70s early 80s I realized that that might not be available that position I think at some point I also love the idea of being a stuntman I'm going to say stunt man. I'll say man because just you know, because that's how we used to talk back then. A stunt person. There's probably a completely different title for them now, but I think part of that was because I was influenced by Evil Knievel, and I was influenced by Lee Majors. You know when the Bionic Man went and became a, a stunt man. The, the fall guy. I'm the unknown stunt man that makes East Wood look so fine. Do you remember that? Oh, if you might not, but it was so good. So good. He's still alive and he's 112. It's amazing. He's just. He was. I really liked him. So yeah, I think I wanted to be a stuntman because of that, because of him, because of the TV shows I used to see. There was loads of, um, cause you back then they used stunt people, didn't they, to do the stunts. There was no really any CGI or, I mean now if you got the if you got the time and the, the expertise you can put together pretty much a movie on your laptop now if you know what you're doing with the technology that's about it's amazing hmm what else I think when I got older I quite like the idea of being I, I wanted to be a monkey boxer so <laughs> I mean this is when I was older when I was about 14 I had this book, and there was an Australian, a monkey boxer who lived in Australia, and this book was sort of teaching the style, the moves and all that stuff, like the form of the monkey boxer. Can have another drink. Ear flapper, ear flapper, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, yeah, so I, I want to do that. I think one of the things that when I, like a bit more of a serious idea I had, I wanted to be a wheeler dealer, like Del Boy or Arthur Daly. And I'm sure there was a lot of kids around the country that wanted to do that because of those two programs, Only Fools and Horses and Minder. 
I got into that a little bit. First of all, when I was at school, I used to money lend. I didn't go too well. And then when I left school, I was used to sell stuff, buy and sell. That went all right. But it was really just, a lot of the time it was just me selling my own belongings for less than they were worth. So I wasn't really doing great. I mean, I did once sell a fridge freezer, bought it for 15, sold it for 40. And that was the best thing that ever happened in my life at that point, I think. I was so pleased with myself. <laughs> so that was that was it. But that and I was really into and I at this time I was sixteen and I was getting the exchange in Mart and ordering all these things, like these business ideas where you know, some of them were you'd get um, a perfume kit and with these per perfume samples and I'd go around trying to get people to order perfumes from me another one was jewellery uh, some of the other business ideas was number plates trying to get people to buy number plates like private, you know, personal number plates nothing really took off but you know like I was trying to do something I really wanted to succeed at something I never did but I was at that time I was very really passionate about it I would say probably leading up to leaving school I did the year before I left school I did two weeks work experience in a builders a building firm which was local to where I lived uh, one of the builders actually lived opposite me where I lived it just in the house opposite and the firm was just around the corner it was called White's I think it was called White's Builders. And I was there for two weeks. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was freezing cold. And I couldn't care at all. Didn't care that it was cold. I just loved everything about it. Uh, they had me just doing grotty jobs. Sorting through a, a huge pile of bricks. Separating the bricks from... Like the good bricks from the crap grips, bit of it, the 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 complete bricks from the broken ones, stuff like that, and I enjoyed it. I spent time with the bricklayers, I spent time with the plasterer, I spent time with upstairs with the joiner, the carpenter. So I got to, and also was in the, I was in the office answering the phone. I was doing all kinds of things, and I loved it. And I'd have stayed there if I was able to stay there and not go back to school. I would have done. And they they said to me, "Come and see us when you leave school," which was a year later. Left school, went and saw them. They didn't have any vacancies, didn't have any, any anything available. I'd have happily gone, you know, I wasn't expecting a job job, I thought it'd be an apprenticeship or something, so I was happy to do that. They didn't have anything, and shortly afterwards they closed. In fact, the receptionist in there, the person that was the main receptionist, ended up working in a chip shop with me. She was nice. Mind you, I didn't... She was nice, but unfortunately... Her son ended up dating one of the girls in the chip shop that I liked. So I was not happy with that. <laughs> it was weird, because one of the girls... said that, that she dated him... Her, her son, who was younger than she was. And then... The main person working there full time, as a female, she 
her brother was dating the woman who was working in the office and then came and worked in the chip shop. And she was probably 20 years older than him. 15, 20, whatever, I don't know. So I guess it was just a family thing. They liked older people. He liked older women. She liked younger men. Like they weren't, I think they just, they weren't stuck in the mindset of this is how it should be. They were a bit more open-minded. Which is good for them, but I just, it was annoying because I, I liked her. But I did get on really well with a mum. With, with his mum. This is getting confusing now, isn't it? Whose mum are we talking about? I don't know. Yeah. And then... So I, I like the idea of being either a bricklayer, didn't want to be a carpenter, no interest in carpentry, at school, metalwork, carpentry, nah, ah, 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 no thanks. Had to do it for a couple of years, didn't like it, just wasn't me. However, building, something like bricklaying, plastering maybe, those are the two that I found quite interesting. The plastering, I think it's because I liked the people that were doing it. The plasterer was, I mean, he was a tall bloke. He was a part-time fireman. And there, his bleeper went off one day and he had to rush off because he was on call pretty much the whole time. And okay, it's nothing more, imp it's, it's an impressive, I was, I was 14, so to be around someone that both had a a cool job as a plasterer earning probably earning really good money and then almost flying off it was almost like he was Clark Kent Clark Kent in, as a plasterer and turned into Superman to go and save people in the events of fires and stuff yeah my, my chair's a bit st squeaky isn't it so I like the idea of doing that. I also like the idea of maybe doing bricklaying. Because I've done a little bit of bricklaying and pointing at my house where I lived. So I knew my way around a... Sh uh, what is it? Not a javelin. A travel? A travel? Not a truffle. What's those things you use? Travel? Travel? Bavel? Gavel? Whatever they are, like, that you put you used to put cement on bricks. It seemed like something I could do. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal now, you know, because my back in that, but when I was younger, it would have been fine. And the plastering. It's not that it was easy, it just, it looked, it looked like something that I could have fun doing. I don't know why. It just looked like something that would be... You know, to, to, to complete something and have that satisfaction of having done a whole wall or a whole house. Yeah. So that, that appealed to me. And I would have done either of those jobs as a an apprentice... The downs, I suppose the downside or whatever is because I lived in a tiny little town. There wasn't a huge amount of opportunities for stuff like that. But I probably could have, I could have delved into it. I could have looked. I mean, I think I did. I'm sure I went to a, a, a builder's site asking if they were looking and no one did. That, you know, but I don't. I didn't search far and wide. Which was fine. I mean, if I'd have... I didn't have any interest in electrician stuff. Oh, my dad was an electrician. I just... It didn't really interest me. Plumbing? Not really. Although, the amount of money in plumbing... It would have been a really good career choice. 
or to become a heating engineer, things like this. It's, it's a well-paid job. But I didn't, it just didn't interest me. And I suppose because I had such a lovely experience in the building firm, that's when I thought, oh, I can do this. This is fun. I'm not being moaned at. I'm not. I'm not at school. I'm not. I'm being treated, kind of like an adult in a, you know, in a way, which is the first time that ever happened. So that was quite nice. So yeah, there. I'm trying to. I can't think of any other things that I wanted to do, like job wise, when I grew up. I think that's everything. So Sean. I think that's everything that I can remember. And I didn't do any of them. Any of the things that I kind of wanted to. Uh, also, Sean asks, what's a piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Hmm. I think if it was someone about to leave school my advice is and I guess this isn't going to be necessarily correct for everybody but you know it depends where you live and but I would say it's worth trying to remember that this is an amazing time with the options are so broad you can choose pretty much anything you want to do you know there's limits there's always limitations as far as if you need qualifications to do certain jobs you can't just walk in to being a teacher you can't necessarily just walk and be a work in a stock market and you need to have a certain aptitude for, for particular jobs that like I never had the, the correct aptitude for um, any of my jobs <laughs> none and this is the only thing I've really had the proper aptitude for the proper aptitude and attitude but as soon as someone started moaning at me I'd stop doing this it's weird isn't it I just I, I can't as soon as, like, if I was told off, you know, I was sort of taken into a room, we don't know, you stop moaning at me, like, no, see ya. Right, Vinny started barking. <sighs> what, uh, what advice would I give a younger, my younger self? I definitely, something like that, just like, you'd, the options when you're young, not for everyone, but you know, I'd say just I'm going to be general generalizing here. I didn't realize it at the time, but I had so many options when I was 15, 16, so many options, and I didn't, I wasn't aware of it, I just didn't know. So I would definitely say, keep your options open. Unless it's something that you're, you know, completely determined to do. Whether it's go to university, go to college, you know, do an apprenticeship. Something that you've always wanted to do. Become a writer, become an actor. Uh, train horses, become a professional footballer. Whatever it is, you, you know, that that's your dream. I'd also say follow your dreams. Yeah, it's it's a difficult one because the amount of millions of people that would probably want to be a professional footballer. If every if everyone that wanted to be a professional footballer didn't refuse refuse to do anything else but play football, then I think the entire <laughs> the western world in fact the entire world would just collapse the economy would collapse because not everyone can be a f professional footballer I guess yeah 
Yeah, follow your dreams. Do something you enjoy as well. That's something else. I mean, I know I'm talking about jobs and stuff, but like in life, generally, if you're going to work and you're going to be doing 40 hours a week or whatever, do something you're going to enjoy. And get paid. I mean, what I did is I ended up getting paid practically nothing for the first two years of my work life. And even though I was just really young, there's no no excuse really. Still need to get paid. Still need to, you know, especially when you're young, if you want to go out and do stuff and have a nice clothes and when you get to 17 or whatever, you want to perhaps get a car, learn to drive. You need money for that. So you need a decent, if a, you know, enough coming in for you to enjoy your youth. If you can. Not everyone can do that. I wasn't able to. But at the same time, I didn't know it was an option. I just took the first job I could get and I kept doing that for pretty much my whole working life. Just went from one job to the next, just grabbed hold of the next opportunity, what I saw as an opportunity. And I ended up, I didn't didn't end up with anything. All I ended up with was debt living in a damp rubbish whole old room and being ill so yeah that wasn't I'm not saying that every, that was just my life but I think if I'd have spent more time doing things that I enjoyed as a job doing something it's, it's not even a case of doing doing what you enjoy it's finding out what you enjoy I think that's the challenge That's a challenge. I I know some people absolutely love what they do for a job. And they may tell you themselves that they just, it was luck. They happened to start working in a place and they realised they enjoyed it. They They didn't know they were going to. And that could be anything. That could be data entry. It could be working behind a bar. It could be whatever it is. And I think that's a, it's like with so many things, one person's nightmare job can be another person's dream job. Now, I absolutely did not like working behind a bar, but I've met people that love it, absolutely love it, and I didn't like one second that I ever spent behind a bar. And I had a couple of jobs doing that, two full-time jobs. So yeah, it's uh, find what you enjoy doing. Go for your dream. So I have gone from I did go for my dream. I went for my dream as a, to be a stand-up comedian. I moved to London to do it. I did do it for what seven, eight years or whatever it was. But I was never successful. I had some good gigs. I had lots of lots more very medium and even more really bad ones but it feels quite nice the fact that I did it at least I attempted it I didn't know what I was doing at all and in some ways it could be argued that I wasted my 20s now I lived in pretty much poverty you know just just on the on the poverty level for most of my 20s 
in and out of work. Just, you know, so it's, it's just how it was. At least I tried. So I think that's all right. I think try to do, if you can find what you love doing, now, you, you know, this is like advice to a young person, I suppose. Not that anyone would listen to me. I think, do what you love, even if you can't do it as a job. Just try and, you need to do what you love doing. You know, at some point in, in, in the week. Whether it's going to badminton once a week, whether it's having, you know, building train um, model railways in your garage. I mean, it's just, there's millions of different versions of this. It's just whatever makes you feel happy. Do that. Even if you can't do it as a job. And do it, have it separate. At least do that. And ideally try and, if you can, at an early age, try and get a job, find a job that you're going to enjoy doing. And I don't mean all the time, because no job's going to be pleasant all the time. Even the best job in the world is going to be boring and tedious and challenging at times. That's my that's my opinion. The other thing is, it's just that the, 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 they say youth is wasted on the young. It's an old saying, isn't it? Make the most of, if you're able to, maybe appreciate what you do have, knowing that it won't always be there. And I don't necessarily mean people, but that is one thing. You know, if you've got um, relatives that are, you know, a fair bit older than you, this is my talking, me talking to young, a young, 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 young person. Kind of, maybe if you can, cherish them. Realise that they're not going to be around forever. Perhaps like elderly par elderly grandparents, even friends. People come and go into your life, out of your life, don't they? Which is just natural. And if you if you let's say if you're really young and you're with someone, maybe appreciate how lucky you are to be with that person. Because there might come a time in the future when you look back and you'll think, "Oh, <laughs> I wish I'd, I wish I'd really appreciated it at the time." I mean, the amount of I've seen like blokes in their 20s or even late teens I've seen them clearly not appreciating the girlfriend that they got not realising that when they're in their 40s they're going to look back and think wow how lucky they were to even have females give them any attention at all Perhaps I mean not for everyone, but I've noticed I'm more and more invisible as I got older. Not in size. I mean I became bigger as I got older, but I definitely became invisible. Very much so. What advice would I give a young person? Have fun. Try and have fun, but not at other people's expense. 
It's a hard one, really, because I never listened to anyone when I was young. Really, didn't listen to a single person. So I, I didn't really take advice from anybody. Hmm. I get it. I don't know. What advice would I give? Find something you love doing. Because, you know, I sometimes wonder if I could have... Well, to be fair, the internet... I started doing this kind of as soon as podcasting was around, really. So I have been doing this as long as... I started doing this before YouTube was it, or, and Facebook even came out. So technically... I, not ahead of the game, but I was kind of doing this. But I wasn't doing this. It took me a long time to find my voice. I don't know, there's probably lots of people who wish I hadn't, but I did. And me just waffling on like this. It took a long time for me to just be me, whatever that is. Find your own... Yeah, okay, this is something I would give. This is this is the one. I found it. So, to any young people, listen to this. Your voice and what you've got to say is equally important as what anyone else has got to say. So, if you've got an opinion, if you've got feelings, your feelings, how you feel about something is valid. So if someone says, oh, it doesn't matter what you feel, it's not true. It does matter what you feel. It might not matter to them, but it still matters to you. The problem with if you're, if you're young, very young, you don't have the, because of the hierarchy, because of the you know, like teachers are the boss, parents are the boss, police are the boss, adults seem to all be the boss of kids. So it can be difficult. But once you become a teenager, once you become like 15, 16, 17, 18, what you may find, and I found this, even in my 20s, older people will talk down to you sometimes. Maybe a lot of times. And may shut you down verbally, almost as if what you have to say is not valid because you're so young, and that they they feel like they know everything because they're in their forties or their fifties. And I sometimes think that the older I get, the less I know. And I remember keeping quiet. Not feeling in the in the slightest bit confidence in my own words, in my own voice, because I was constantly being shut down by older people. Not not necessarily much older. Sometimes just a few years older. Sometimes decades older. When you realise that your voice is just as relevant as anyone else's. Your feelings are just as relevant as anyone else's. Just as important. As I said, maybe not to them, but to you. Also, I know this is probably getting a bit heavy, but for any kid listening, never at any age let somebody bully you ever don't allow it whether you're whatever sex you are boy girl whatever whatever you are do not allow anybody to bully you ever I know some would say well I can't trust me don't allow it nip that in the bud at a very early age if you can I did. I mean, I had, I suppose, maybe I had an advantage. 
because I had two older brothers and also kids couldn't do any I was used to dealing with adults when I was little so kids weren't really scary to me other kids that didn't intimidate me but I never let anyone bully me no kids don't ever let, let a kid bully you ever when you're a kid and when you're an adult don't let any adults bully you either if you're a kid and an adult is trying to give you hassle make sure you tell another adult an appropriate person and I realised you said appropriate instead of appropriate perhaps I need to do, to do a podcast for young people and I don't know how young we were going with this a younger self is this for me to give myself a younger it wasn't for young people listening it's for my younger self I do apologise I'll go back if I was going to sell my go back and tell my younger self the first thing I would do probably is don't do not walk into that chip shop and ask for a job that's one of the things I would tell myself I'm like you know straight away there's different times in my life I would go back and correct correct the uh, pathway I was going on And I know the whole is the whole cliche of well, if I hadn't done that, then that, then I wouldn't have led to this. And if it wasn't for the good, if, if, you know, I have to have the bad times and the good times because then I wouldn't be where I am now. I'm not sure if I'd really want to be where I am now. To be fair, I don't know if this was where I would, this was where I would hope and I would end up. So I'd definitely go back and do that. I would give advice to myself. Keep away from alcohol and any other stuff like that. Avoid at all costs chaos and chaotic people. Definitely would. But I doubt that that would be a, a bit of advice there. I'd, I'd like to think that I could go back and tell myself to try harder at school, but I just don't think that was going to happen. The only thing, the only way I could be in, do something is if I'm interested in it. I have to almost become fanatical about something in order for me to really learn. You know, to sit and study, I have to be all encompassing that thing you know that's everything that's happened a few times in my life happened with hypnosis happened with website building happened with werewolves and the occult when I was at school it happened with this stuff that I do now it's still happening with this stuff this is the only thing I've got any interest in doing, really. I mean, as long as it's hopefully helping people, then I'll continue. Boring people to sleep. What would I tell my younger self? It's, I suppose, a cliche. You know, don't drink, don't smoke, eat healthy definitely would have said to myself keep doing the karate keep doing it get yourself a job on the docks with your evenings free and continue doing the karate get help get whatever help you can to find yourself somewhere decent to live uh, a flat or so, you know somewhere that I could live and get myself on a council list and you know, that kind of situation. And I probably would have had a council flat quite early on, actually, if I'd have done that. All things considered my situation back then. So there's different versions of my younger self that I would give advice to. That would be one of them, that, that, like that kind of period. Um, some things I can't say because it's pretty extreme. 
some of the things that I would tell myself to do when I was very young. Um, I suppose I'd like to tell myself is certain times that things are going to be okay. To be able to come back, you know, like from the past or from the future rather than back and sort of say, look, good news. I'm from your, I'm from your future. I'm 54. This is me in 2024. I've come back. The good news is everything is going to be okay. You don't need to worry about this thing that is just overwhelming you at the moment. Everything's going to be okay. So I've got good news and bad news, and that's the good news. What's the bad news? This is how you're going to look when you're 54. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah. It's going to be different times where I'll give advice. Don't destroy my belongings. That would be one. Don't ever get a credit card. Don't ever get a loan. Don't ever get in debt. Ever. That would be my advice to me, because that didn't suit me. I think also I would have advised myself to find a way to straighten my hair when it was long, rather than just have it be all curly, because I think I might have enjoyed it more. There's at least a couple of occasions from a romantic perspective that I would like to have intervened. Intervened? Two, two, only two, maybe three. Two in a kind of a nice way, in a sense of two women that I didn't pursue that seemed to like me when I say pursue I mean just date really I would have gone both I'd give myself advice to spend time with both of those people in a kind of romantic environment to see whether or not it was it would you know transform into something pretty amazing and I think it's possible both of those could have been it's just only two mm. I'm trying to think what other things I'd give myself a lot of advice over the years like don't do that don't do it stop don't do that don't do that don't do that Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Really, just little things. And there's a few things that I really would have sort of stopped myself, but I think that's normal for everyone. To be fair, I think. I'm trying to think of like a really good bit of advice. Allow myself to be happy. Allow myself to believe that I'm... Allow someone to love me, maybe. Open myself up to that. Yeah, I guess. I don't know how I would be able to put, portray that message. Yeah. Okay, so I'll move on. Uh, thanks, Sean. Uh, Christine asks you said your dad and his wife are going abroad this Christmas where are they going um, no they're not going abroad they are they're going to go and stay with my sister so they are going yeah because my dad has to have some treatment some medical stuff next week so he should be okay enough to go before Christmas 
to go for Christmas rather. So that'll be a break. So I'm going to go there, have Christmas there. And that's with my stepmom's, well, it's my stepsister, my stepmom's daughter. So they're both going to be there. So yeah, they should, it should be nice. I was speaking to him the other day and I said that would be good because to my daddy, I won't have to do quite so much and my stepmom started laughing because my dad doesn't do anything at Christmas. But he's, he, he, he is the the life and soul of Christmas though. He is, he loves Christmas. Uh, so that's it. So Christy asks, which way is easiest to send you money a money gift finding it a bit tricky this is a genuine question on now I'm not just added this because I want people's money um, I mean I have a PayPal thing on my new Jason Newlands boring group there's right at the top of the page paypal.com forward slash Jason Newland but honestly it's fine I don't it's I'm just beginning just to accept how things are right now so but that that is I mean it's it's always handy sort of to be able to pay off some of the costs of running this thing I'm trying to cut down the costs anyway and I could cut I could I cut I could actually cut down the costs by yeah I can't get rid of the images because I need the images 20, 30, yes yeah, so 25, 35, 40 so I need at least 40 quid 40 pound a month for for that and then number never 20 so that's 60 65 and what else yeah, it's, it's, that's it really, PayPal's the only thing. I don't know what else, what else I can put on there. But, you know, I don't expect anyone to send me anything, to be fair. It's just, it's nice when it happens, it happens occasionally. And it's just really to cover the costs, or if you want me to buy myself a coffee or something. That's very kind of you. Or, I mean, I could put an Amazon, what do they call it, like a list, Amazon shopping list or whatever, for Vinny. Because he, he loves treats and any any help towards getting him food and that's always good. But, yeah. We seem to have run out of questions. We seem to have run out of questions. My goodness. Who would have thought that that would happen? I don't know how long we've been talking. Let's have a look. Wow, nearly two hours. How can it be two hours? I've not said a damn thing. <laughs> uh. Dear Mr. Newland, your module E104 is now underway and we hope you've enjoyed your studies. We've noticed that you've not submitted your first assignment. Did you not get my message? And I got a message earlier saying, Thank you for speaking with me regarding your study. We've now forwarded your request to withdraw, withdraw from the psychology degree. So it takes, a, it takes a, a week for that to do. Oh dear, okay. So that's that's it. I don't think there's anything else, any more questions. I'm going to have summer to eat. Summer to eat. Oh yes. I'm going to be in bed by 10. Because I want to listen to the... Nick Abbott's show on LBC. I'll probably be up quite early. I don't know, I might try and get this podcast edited and uploaded, but it is five past seven in the evening, and I feel a bit tired, to be fair. 
Uh, a little bit tired. Just a little bit tired. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording. That really. Resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew 
exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any 
type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice The 
ease in which you breathe so naturally. Breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever 
this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy. physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders, just 
deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply There's a sense of peace Spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow.
your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Your knees, relax. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. 
tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers all the way to your lower back. Letting go, really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even
enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice your forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
of notice. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
gentle pace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. Or 
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't, this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focusing. 
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area. Start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go. As you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already Yeah. 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message your arms and you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Focus in. 
the sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. Tips to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and your shins completely So I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step repre 
sense a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
Six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes going to begin counting down from 10 down to 1 right now
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think Think about anything. So it, op it opens up a space, you know, a bit of a space, a gap. And the more I count down from 10 to 1, the bigger that gap becomes. So there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And then 
as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Now, ten, nine, eight, seven. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joint. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you you can still have that attention on your thighs maybe notice how your thighs feel maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know, logically, our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is okay. Doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. It didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet We're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. course it's protected by your legs so you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs that fold in between your legs you can just massage with your fingertips imagine your fingertips going inside Massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massage in every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body, they're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit silly to start with 
the idea of having the love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in your bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet they also go whew, and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs And I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, but they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. really can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. 
and the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice. 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
around you now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, There's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your Each 
starting with number eight. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. take that away which is what we 
do what we do now. You're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And it's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. 
is something's changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try and do it and stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let go, be 
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive way. positive way, opening up, your mind to useful and healing suggestions. effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you. Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose. For yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. So 
と and that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry, doesn't, it doesn't, des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here, negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
10. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body 
started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body. Pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills with that healing energy, feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start to drift, That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body, and you may find yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. Because 
is that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, you eventually are drifting continuous to sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up and you are in time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you if you want to do and if you do sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep, and it feels so nice. Feel that healing energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing your soul so deeply. As you start focus on your eyes, moving down to your jaw, Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focus. 
focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on the fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now letting them seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if Focusing on the knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
noticing how the mind feels now. go of everything letting going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. 
realize that you're safe and it's all good, it's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles. 
muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides, the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you that way it'll still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes even if it is with a stranger someone you don't know very well like a massage person or a therapist maybe because it's intimate feel nice, you can feel 
feel safe. As I put that right arm back down where it was, and you do the same with your left arm, exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently, massaging the palm of your left hand, and it feels so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top and between your shoulders, and then your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. can do that a few times. Sometimes we can use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. 
each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massaging that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, 
and whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from the chest. These all connected the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine in your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, the fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot, massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but Firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. 
as I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over and unwind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. And 
both sides of your neck, chin, Massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And you're just massaging the whole of the chest. chest around, I feel it's quite a large area, as you move from one side to the next, moving with my hands, underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button to the other side of you and repeat that.
process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around the belly button, and going the other way around, with a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. and now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoy feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You 
going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. Each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow. not a big blow, it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well. And as we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, those forest the pigeons, that likes to say hello sometimes. seems important whatsoever. The more candles you blow out, the less 
it's important anything is more than how it is you go out the further you seem to move away from the sound say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. The first candle, which is one hundred. Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting.
Sitzen.
ici.
all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, what your body starts to do because you've chosen you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down and it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you so often we're busy we're going from here to there we're walking around and we're doing stuff and the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply so it kind of waits for you to lead the way waits for your permission do give your permission and you give the say so you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all like the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour feels blissful and just by sitting there like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind evaporate any tensions any 
just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more stable in. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As a sense of relaxation becomes stronger, listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and it was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we not may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries,
breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. Synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know when feeling completely calm, loose. benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your head muscles. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply relax even more completely go of any remaining thoughts or concerns allowing them to just drop into the floor because they're no longer necessary in this moment in this moment of deep relaxation
scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off Focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Opening and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you
relaxing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. And then turn on your ankles, moving your feet around, making your toes gentler. Focusing now on your eyes, I invite you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes. raising your eyebrows, it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects. Focusing on your thighs. And I would just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, and as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up. sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of your eyes, biceps and the triceps area between your elbow 
want to include the size of your problem because what size is very much relative. This was your series, your scenario in which you were preparing a
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling. Maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. May not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. It's almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing forced in one. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along and you feel in your chest just noticing what sensations in in your chest right now any 
so much of the chest, obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles in the chest, of course as a female there's possibly the breasts, if you're a male you've got the different, I might not know different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that, there's no point doing it 
Okay, so uh, make sure you create the pair part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times. You may need some detox or something in between. If you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. It's just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving them there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship movie, a space movie, you know, and some little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, and continue.
physical sensation. And also in terms of mentally, outside of your head, sucking the tension and the stress and all the numbing feelings that you don't want. Sucking it out through your stomach. is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just
this time. Let it all release the tension, the stress, and the anxiety that you may have.